Hey guys, let's go over some basics here on how to use a solderless barrel connector. This is a really nice upgrade to what used to be the standard for hard case battery barrels. Now, uh, this is actually repairable and reusable in a way that you wouldn't really get with a standard barrel. You still have the actual barrel on the end, but if the wiring ever wears out coming out of this, which, you know, if you're bending it back and forth, plugging it in, unplugging it, you know, that might happen at some point. So, you know, if that ever happens, you can just remove that part, cut it back, and stick it back in, bolt it back down. You've got, you've got your Phillips head on the top, so you can just screw that down. It pushes these posts in and it grabs hold of the wiring. You can see an example here. This is XT60 male on one side and solderless barrel on the other. And you can see here where the wiring sticks in. Here's another example. This is XT60 female. And you can see where it's going in there really nicely. This was the original design. Basically the de facto standard for XT60 to barrel. And you know, you just have a single piece of shrink and you have a barrel on the end. The problem with this is that you would see these tips break off either right at this point where the metal meets the plastic or where the plastic meets the wiring. With this new version, you don't really have that problem because this is constructed in a much higher quality way. So that's definitely good. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this. Here we have latest and greatest in XT60 revision, the XT60H, which unlike previous versions, it actually has a shroud on the end. So instead of having bare wires where you've soldered it that would need to be covered with shrink, you now have this nice little plastic shroud on it. So on an XT60 pigtail that you get by default, it's going to be pre-tinned with solder, but we don't really need the solder. Since that's just gonna get in the way. So let's just go ahead and strip this back a little bit after cutting it. Got ourselves some Nice bare wires, that's good. And what we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna want to make this as nicely twisted together as we can so that we can stick it all into the terminals. Now as far as the default XT60 pigtails that you would get from Luna, or possibly other suppliers. Uh, it's a pretty large size wire, so you might have some difficulty getting it all in here. And, you know, this isn't a high current connection, so, you know, if you need to, you actually, you can cut this back a little bit, you know, trim off enough of the wires to get it to stick in there better. So, you know, if you run into that issue, you know, don't don't let it trip you up. You, you'll be fine doing it that way if you need to. So here we've got one end stuck in and we can see, you know, it's in there. It's in there pretty good. So let's go ahead and tighten this down. So we got this tightened down and we can see, you know, we can pull this. That's not going anywhere. 
and we can do the same thing on the other side. And that is that. Now one thing you do want to check here is that you don't have any wiring touching from one side to the other as you know that would be a short. So how would we test that you know we don't have a short? Well it's a really good question and one, one thing you should definitely check. So assuming you have a multimeter we got one here. Let's go ahead and put it on continuity. Double check that we have it on continuity. So, if this is bridging, it's beeping. So, Let's go ahead and stick one wire in the barrel here and the other wire on the outside of the barrel. I'll go ahead and zoom you in here a little bit so you can see. We got one in and one out. The inside corresponds to one polarity and the outside corresponds to the other. So if this was touching then this would be right now and it's not so we're good to go now if if you're finding that you've got a whole bunch of excess wires here and it looks like it might end up touching at some point after it's you know moving around and that sort of thing then you know you might want to trim that back a little bit you could definitely uh, give that some consideration but right now I think this is good just to kind of go over the basics so now let's go over how to cover this up because you know one thing to keep in mind is these these terminals even the screws you know they're conductive so you know if you had like I mean if you're just touching it with your fingers that's probably not a big deal since it's not going to you know it's not gonna go through your skin um, unless it's like above 60 volts, something like that. But, um, you know, if you have a wedding ring or something like that, and you happened to bridge that, you know, that would definitely suck. So, um, let's go ahead and figure out a way to cover this up, shall we? So, we got a few options here. Option one is liquid electrical tape and this is basically like uh, it's almost like almost like paint or something um, and you would sort of swab this on and it dries almost instantly and provides like a very rigid sort of sealed uh, waterproof thing I mean the wires under there are not going to move now the downside of this is that you know you wouldn't really be able to access those terminals later so it would no longer be um, a reusable connector um, but you know on the other hand it would definitely be well constructed so you may not really need it to be reusable it's a trade-off but one that you might want to consider so Next up is an old standby, just plain old electrical tape. You know, this is uh, this is a good electrical tape at least. Um, you know, you could kind of just grab some of that and just kind of wrap it over, and you know that'll you know that'll do the trick. It's not necessarily fancy and. You know, not necessarily going to hold forever, but uh, it's an option. Next one is silicone tape. Very interesting little uh, 
piece of tech. You can wrap this over and this fuses to itself basically instantly. So just wrap it over like you would the electrical tape and it's almost like as if you put heat shrink on it or something. It's, it's not going to um, unravel or anything like that even if you're very harsh with it because it, it literally like fuses together. Um, so it's just one single piece, but you know, if you need to cut it off later, you can. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, like having uh, electrical tape as well as having uh, liquid electrical tape. Next up we got heat shrink. So, here we have a nice big old piece of heat shrink, right? This is definitely doable, but, you know, as far as these sort of, like, kits that you get, you're probably not going to find um, the right size uh, that you would need to go over this, this end piece. So that's really the only downside. I, I, you know, there are uh, certain kinds of heat shrink as well like like this is adhesive lined so um, once you heat it up it's probably not really going to be movable either so it's going to be similar to the liquid electrical tape personally I would probably go with the liquid electrical tape over this um, it does provide a decent amount of abrasion resistance that the liquid electrical tape might not provide unless you do like multiple layers so that might be worth considering just for that, but you know, ideally, if you could get like a really large size, slip it over and you know, get it either with or without the adhesive on it, depending on what you want, then it might be an option and it might be doable. But like this small stuff, I mean, you can't even, you can't even really stick it on there. You know, I mean, you can see here, it's not even going to go over halfway. So, something to keep in mind there. So those are your four uh, options as far as that is concerned. And that's pretty much it. Hope you guys found this helpful.